Hello, and welcome back to the Alexander Society Podcast. I'm Tim, just a normal bank patron with an umbrella, and with me today is my good buddy Derek, who signs the lease with his real name. How you doing, Derek? Um, sorry, apparently, apparently not committing some sort of fraud against the bank. Uh, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing pretty good. I, I should say, all things considered. Also, to the our beautiful patrons, Derek, over the break, officially got married. Congratulations, good buddy. Yeah, it was fucking great. It was. Uh, it wasn't anything like, like extravagant or anything, but it was ours, and uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm still getting used to the ring. Rings are hard to get used to. So, Derek, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, what am I drinking? So, uh, for my sippers, uh, while I was on my honeymoon, actually, we went to this uh, this lovely, lovely, uh, excellent, just really well put together brewery in. Uh, in La Vida, Colorado. Um, it's a tiny little town in the mountains. It's so, uh, southeast corner of the state. Um, and it was a fantastic brewery. It was really, really nice, really clean. The The co-owner was bartending. She was brilliant, fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. And they make amazing beer. Some of the, some genuinely, like without exaggeration, some of the best beer I've ever had. Um, and so I came home with a six pack of tall boys from, uh, this place. It's a brewery called mountain merman brewing company, La Vida, Colorado. And I've got a whole sort of collection of stuff. Uh, the, the ones that I'm going to be drinking tonight are going to be go, go with the flow, which is a Pilsner. And that's going to be a 5%. Uh, I've got summer flash, which is a watermelon lager. That's going to be 4.5. Uh, I can't remember what this one is called. It's uh, it kind of got scraped off, but uh, this one's like a golden, uh, like a golden lager, I think. Um, it's a four point eight, and then uh, and then I got an ale, which is a four point five percent. And all of them I've tried, even like the stout that I tried there, I wasn't able to get the stout because it was a nitro, it doesn't can well, but the nitro. Or the yeah, the stout, best stout I've ever had in my life. Really nice, rich, dark, uh, without being like super overbearing. It's it's like if you've ever if you ever if you've ever had Guinness, and you wanted to like it but you just couldn't. <laughs> yeah, just the just Mountain Merman, La Vida, Colorado. Uh, they're still pretty small because they were just founded a couple years ago, but genuinely really good people and they make really good beer so if you if you ever have a chance like check them out and then for my for my liquor uh, i got some rum uh we've had this on the show before it's the the florida Kanye 18 years uh i just fucking love florida Kanye. it's uh, one of my that's up there is one of my better rums and oh it smells so sweet it smells so sweet and it's old God, this is going to be a good night. This is going to be a good night. Oh, this I love everything here. Tim, what are you drinking? Um, so tonight, it is cider night for me. I had a bunch of just one-off beers of cider left from my birthday party slash what Derek gave me. So I started off the night with Anthem Brewings, super fancy. It's a 7.7, just regular apple cider. It's amazing, as everything Anthem does. And then... My boys, Zach and Nathan, came through for my birthday party and made uh, what was honestly a not a very good day for me into a, a better one, and I really appreciate them. Um, Schilling Hard Cider, uh, Legends of Cider, Citrus Maximus. It's a 5.2, and then their local legend, which is got a cute little Sasquatch or Bigfoot on it, depending on how you want to put him. And it's, a five, like I said, a 5.2. Um, and I, I think I tried each one of these that night. They're all supremely good. And then for my shots tonight, I'm also dipping into what they bought me for my birthday. They got me a little sh- shooter shots. Uh, I didn't think we needed most of the mystery dockets. We don't really have a big, um, shot count. So I just got the individuals for it. Um, it is, uh, Casamarina tequila, uh, their Resposado and their Silver Tequila. Um, and those mean different. Uh, the Resposado means a very specific thing, but I can't remember offhand. So, uh, Tequila Nerds, uh, put it in the comments, I guess. <laughs> so, Derek, 
I got to ask you two diverging questions. What do you know about Sherlock Holmes, and what do you know about the Baker Street robbery? Ooh, I'd never heard of the Baker Street robbery before, but um, uh, I'm familiar with Sherlock Holmes. I'm vaguely familiar with uh, uh, several of the characters' stories and the general trope. Do you know of one of the short novels called The Red-Headed League? Doesn't ring a bell, no. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you what happens in that novel until the end, but I want you to know our main heist leader tonight literally based this heist on that novel. He is a Sherlock Holmes fanatic. So like I said, we're going to be covering... The Baker Street heist. Yeah, basically, what if Moriarty was really dumb? <laughs> um, it is the heist from the Baker Street branch of Lloyd's Bank in London on September 11th, uh, 1971. Yeah, the, the, worst, the worst thing to ever happen on September 11th. Nothing would ever get worse than that. I want to live in that timeline. <laughs> If this is the worst thing that happens on September 11th, I want to live on that in that timeline. Real, real quick, you want to go ahead and shoot? Cheers. Prost. So, I or Sherlock-inspired bank heist. And before I say it, I'm going to get this out of the way. This is not a bank heist in the sense that you think it is. They did not go after the vault. They didn't get steal cash. They went after the safety deposit boxes. Oh. See, that's where that's where the good stuff is kept. Well, I mean, it's the hardest thing to prove because they don't know how much was gotten away with, even today. Yeah, and you know, maybe it's uh, depending on how high in that bank is. Maybe it, there's some stuff in there that you know the owners wouldn't kind of want like the authorities to know about. Yeah, like they they're not gonna come forward and yeah, that that that's hinting at what um a lot of people think happened. Uh, this is all the speculation part. We have no confirmation on it later. Uh, happened. I'm not gonna. I'll get it into it later. Um. Our cast of characters of confirmed characters. Because keep in mind, these are the only people that were known at the time. So there were probably more. In fact, uh, there's at least suspected to be one female a part of the high crew. Who I'm going over is just everyone we know for a fact was involved. Our leader, planner, and resident Sherlock fanatic is Anthony Gavin. Benjamin Wolfie. Our resident signs my legal name on the rental contract. He rents out the property. Is this gonna be how they get caught? Are you? Are you... Yeah, he he. Uh, spoiler alert! Uh, putting your name on the rental contract for a place you're using to heist a bank is a bad idea. Reginald Tucker, otherwise known as Reg, was a used car dealer, but he was, and he was the scout of our bank. But he's like. The emphasis on him was like he was he was the, the, one of the cleanest nosed people. There wasn't he he literally was like, you know how a lot of people will call like Superman a Boy Scout because he's a goody two shoes. Yeah, yeah. That's the way he was described. Like not they didn't actually call him a Boy Scout, but like in other words, like I, the way they described him, I got he was a Boy Scout. And again, not literally, but in the clean nose way. Mickey Skinny Gervais, our alarms expert. Probably still a better person than the other. Uh, hey, they, they have very similar names. Mickey, Ricky. Yeah, Ricky Gervais, the comedian, who's also like a... Oh, that's what you're getting at. Yeah, that's immediately what I thought of was Ricky Gervais. So I was like, there's no way. Probably a less shitty person than Ricky Gervais. I don't know anything about either one of them because you can't really Google uh, Mickey Gervais. And I don't know about Ricky Gervais and I don't care to know. Thomas Stevens, another person who hadn't had any run-in with law enforcement that was another thing about reg is they didn't have any run-ins with law enforcement they were not any radars that was the point of using them uh thomas stevens is another person like i said that was no run-ins with law enforcement another boy scout he provided the tools for the job is the best way i can describe it he's the one who got them through the concrete basically and then bobby mills our lookout Sounds like sounds like a sounds like a motley crew of strapping young men. Yeah, uh, and again, these are all the people we know are confirmed to have been a part of the crew. There, we're, there's definitely a suspicion of more people. One hundred percent, there were probably more people. Yeah, just off the bat, just a a real co connect, real collection of just the most obscure, like 
never done anything important in their lives type people that I've ever heard. Those are the most normal sounding names I've ever heard in my life. Basically, yeah. Uh, first one to get recruited was Reg, our car salesman. Again, he had a squeaky record. No runs with law enforcement. Again, he ended up being our scout. Next to be recruited was Thomas Stevens. Spe- again, Reg and Thomas Stevens were recruited because they did not have any runs with law enforcement. Thomas was our uh, tools recruiter. Next was Mickey Gervasis, the uh, uh, the alarms expert. And he was recruited specifically because the bank had a seismic alarm. Oh, okay. So he he, he kind of knew how to get around like uh, like some so like the the a seismic alarm would be like uh, it would like if you broke something or you knocked something like it's look it, it's literally checking for like earthquakes, tremors, anything like that is going to be disturbing the earth. Um, think it, think of like an alarm attached to a seismograph, not literally, but essentially. Yeah. Next was Bobby Mills, our lookout. And we don't know when uh, Gavin really started planning this, but we do know the heist begins in earnest in December of 1970, and that's when they start scouting the bank. So Reg goes ahead and opens up an account with 500 euros, and he starts building a rapport with the bank, essentially. like He's not just immediately being like, oh, I want to open a safety deposit box, blah, 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 blah. He slowly like builds up a relationship with this bank, and then... Later on, he's able to open a safety deposit box, and that's really, again, that's their target. That's where they're going for. So he he starts surveying, scouting out, and he uses a very interesting measuring uh, tool. You want to guess what he used to measure with, Derek? Oh, I can't even have been getting to imagine. Um, I am streaming my screen, so I kind of ruined that if you're actually paying attention. I wasn't. I was deliberately not taking too close a look at it. Um. So he used a umbrella to measure, and I don't know how he used it. I don't know if he literally was, boom, 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 boom. But he 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 used it to measure. I'm not sure if it was like a point of reference. He literally just laid it on the ground, went end to end to end. But that was his measuring tool. And during this time, Stevens is getting all of our tools. He actually ends up getting a hundred ton jack, a thermal lance. And some gelinite. Gelinite. Yes. I've never heard that. It's. <laughs> I hadn't either. It it go boom. That's all I know. Uh, is is it like uh? It, it's. I'm guessing it's a explosive that is in a jelly form. So, ergo, gelinite. Oh uh, okay. British tannerite. If you want to go with that. Probably. Yeah, probably tastes better than their food. Possibly. Um, we go ahead and jump ahead. A miracles de- bestowed upon our heist crew. The leather shop, literally two doors down. So there's a chicken, like rest. It, it says chicken in, so I assume it's a chicken restaurant. And then, because I didn't look it up, there's literally just a diagram on the uh, the Wikipedia page that shows the bank. There's the chicken inn, and then there Ch- chicken inn might just be a pub. It could be too. I'm. It's some kind of eatery or drinker place, is what I'm thinking. Some kind of form of you know, and then there's the leather shop. So literally two doors down, like super convenient. It closed down, and guess what? They were able to rent it for ten thousand euros. Wow! So they're they're genuinely putting like a lot of money into this. It's they're kind of investing a lot into this plot. Yeah, and on, this is where Thomas Wolfie comes in. And as far as I know, his only involvement is signing the lease. Hence the joke at the beginning. He used his real name to sign that lease. Oh, okay. Uh, d- don't do that, dummy. If you're committing a crime, don't. Especially back then, because he could have definitely got away with a fake name. Because, you know, you said this was 1971? Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to be, like... This is May of 1971. Yeah, this isn't, like, back when they ran background checks before you could rent a place. Like, like you could pay in cash and give them just a random name and nobody would bat an eye at it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're just bestowed a yet another miracle for our heist crew. That summer... Road work began, and therefore, the bank was dealing with their seismic alarm keep tripping because of all the construction work. Mm. And guess what they decided to do to their seismic alarm? Did they just turn it off? Yeah. They just... Okay, so the guy who was, who was like, the alarm expert... Instead of just turning it down, which I assume there was a way to turn, turn the sensitivity down, because you would obviously want to turn the sensitivity down... 
They just turned it off. So now the guy who's the alarm expert is useless. I assume that he ended up helping with the rest of the stuff too. He provided he provided moral support. No, 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 no. Because this heist involves digging and tunneling. So they spent an entire summer digging out in the basement for 40 feet <laughs> across to the neighboring property, which is the bank. And keep in mind, this the, the, this leather shop was actually perfect. The basement was almost perfectly in line with the vault of the bank. Like, this was like a godsend for them. You know, God has a plan. God has a plan, I'm telling you. Their digging continued until September 10th of 1971. Uh, and funny thing is, in order to avoid suspicion, they only dug on weekends. Only dug on weekends. Also, supposedly, they just brought it around back, which, uh, the, the extra dirt, because it, they didn't just, it sounds like they didn't just leave it in the shop. But uh, it, when they say around back, I guess what they mean is they probably disguised it with the rest of the roadwork construction, which make a lot of sense. Just like, hey, they're messing with the road. Here's extra dirt. They're never going to realize. Yeah, so this, uh, this sounds like, a, you know, not incompetently done. Actually, it's fairly, like... For the time, this is super competent. I'm not going to lie. Like, there are a lot of places where they're just not, like, they're not thinking about the things that could get them caught. But, like, for what you usually saw on uh, crime back then, this is super competent. Like, this is this has a real plan, even though knowing, hey, it's based on a, a um, Sherlock Holmes plot where the thieves actually did get caught. Spoiler alert. Everyone gets caught in Sherlock's homes. Except Moriarty. He just fucking dies. Yeah, so on September 10th, they finally got to the concrete. That was their final push. Um, of 71 again. This is all in 71. Uh, they tried the 100-ton jack. Couldn't get through the flooring. They tried the thermal lance. Could not get through the, the flooring. The, the concrete, uh, essentially. And so they decided, fuck it. We don't know if these... This the tunnel that we created is like structurally stable. We're gonna use some fucking gelonite and we're gonna blow the shit out of this concrete. Let's fucking go. Shot for boom. Kablooey. I'm calling it. Shot shot for boom. Cheers. Cross. And it sounds like they've like had this straight paved road through their this entire heist. Like everything's like perfectly aligned for them to hit it. Of course a hitch has to come, right? You know, with this particular crew, I'm I'm holding out hope for them. I think they're gonna go go the go the full mile i think they're gonna do okay so they did have a hitch but it didn't stop them at all so their hitch was an amateur radio enthusiast robert rollins so they're actually communicating this entire time with walkie talkies oh my god <laughs> oh man and then as they're making that final push they're using their walkie talkie with the lookout hey blah blah blah, blah is everything okay and this radio enthusiast is like Hey, I think someone's trying to break into a bang. All these nerds being narcs. I swear to God. I thought you were definitely going to be like, another fucking narc again. Two high in a row. Another narc. Stop talking to cops. You freaks. God damn. Yes. Yeah, so Robert Rollins was like, holy shit. I think he was really just honestly what he was doing. They described as what his plans were is he wasn't even really trying to be like, I'm going to find a thief. He was like tuning in as like some radio enthusiasts do trying to find the local, local station. Cause most days you don't find shit. He's not expecting to find anything. Holy fuck. These people are trying to rob a bank. And he starts listening. And then he's like, I'm going to call Scotland yard. And they're like, yeah, right. Dumbass. Narc, narc. And they just ignore him the first time. So he's like, well, fuck you. I'm going to go back. I'm going to listen to more. And I'm going to record it. And then play it for you at either. I can't remember the exact time. So it's two or 3 a.m. is when he calls Scotland Yard back. So this is the middle of the night that he's calling. He's like, hey, there's a heist going on somewhere. I don't know where, but. Yeah, I, I, I could see why the cops, why Scotland Yard wouldn't uh, wouldn't go for that. Like, I, I totally understand why they blew him off the first time. Yeah, even like, like, yeah, I think somebody's robbing a bank. OK, do you know? Do you know where it is? No. Do you know which bank? No. Do you know, like... Do you know anything? Do you know the names? Do you know the location? 
No, I only know that my radio, will, those radios will only go about two miles, which is a good thing to point out. So the radios, walkie talkies only had a mile of two range, range of two miles. Wow. I completely flopped that around. Um, Chat, point and laugh at this man. <laughs> but once they actually realized something was going on and Scotland Yard actually did present a force, they gathered Every person they could and checked every bank in a 10 mile radius. But guess what they did? Guess what the Scotland Yard did for their actual checking the banks? They just kind of hopped in and say, hey, everything good here? They did a little bit more than that. All they did was they went into the bank and they looked at the vault door. If the vault door looked good, they're like, hey, you're fine. You know, that's the that's the kind of quality police work we've come to expect from from our fine our fine boys at Scotland Yard. That's crack crack police work, crack detective work. Good for them. And like this took like most of Sunday. Like so they're already like it's Friday the tenth when they actually started this shit. And it's already Sunday before the police are even like looking into it. They're like, oh God, thank you. I don't have to go to church. <laughs> Fucking love that. So they check the vault doors. They're like, everything looks fine. Obviously, they probably quieted down. They probably uh, did something because they have the lookout. They know the police are here. They're like, oh, shit, it's the cops. They probably jumped into the tunnel for a little bit and waited till they were told, hey, it's clear or something and called it good. You know, so you want to take a stab at how many safety deposit boxes they busted open? OK, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, highest without going over uh, 200. You're, you're pretty damn close. It was 268 safety deposit boxes. Let's fucking go. I'm a fucking genius. You want to guess the range of estimated... Because, pro- they th- again, these are safety deposit boxes. They don't know what's in them. It's part of the, the allure of safety deposit boxes. Can you guess the range? Again, we're working with euros to right now. Uh... In back then money. Wait, euros? Well, Britain's never used euros. Pounds, I'm guessing? Pounds. Probably, yeah, pounds. I'm dyslexic. Sorry. Like, I don't know what their money symbol means. Yeah, the... the. I have never looked at Europe's dollar and just like, oh, that's their symbol. Yeah, the weird curvy line with the, the line in the middle and the hook at the top. Almost like, it's like a fucked up at and sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's pound. Yeah, apologies. Pounds. Can you guess in pounds, back in the day, what it was worth? Okay, can you give me an idea of, like, how, like, like is this in, like, a rich neighborhood? Is this, in, like, a middle-class neighborhood? Is, I don't know, I don't know, where, like, where in London Baker Street is. I don't know anything about the neighborhood. I don't know either, uh, to be perfectly honest. Like, I didn't look up the area. But I can tell you there's a 2.5 million pound difference between the low and high estimate. Oh, boy. That's okay. Um, okay. I'm going to guess 6 million to 8.5 million. You're way skyrocketing, but not if we're going by today's pounds. Um, so in... 1971 money, it was anywhere from 500,000 pounds to 3 million pounds, is their guesstimate. They have no idea how much was actually stolen. Like, genuinely don't know. Yeah, I was thinking in, like, modern pounds. I guess it would be a lot less back then, wouldn't it? Modern? uh, Holy shit, does it go up. You want to take a stab at the dark at modern, or you want me to just tell you? Um... Let's see, 500,000, I would guess, ooh, I don't know, their economy's not doing too well right now. Um, it's still stronger than the dollar. Uh, it's been it's been jumping rope. It's been fluctuating in and out. It's Has it? It's um, Most of our adult lives, it's been stronger than the dollar. Yeah, but the last few years have not been kind to the British economy. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, uh, 3 million? Bro, <laughs> it's anywhere from nine million pounds. Oh fuck! To fifty-four million pounds. 
Oh man, man, England is cooked right now. Holy shit, England is fucked. Holy shit, that's worse inflation than ours. And this is not like this is not t- 2024 money. This is whenever like I those numbers are verbatim. I was not able to find a calculator that could do me British pounds. It's not like I was able to throw this into a calculator. This is what whatever article uh, I looked at was able to find. Honestly, the the one thing that I'm taking from that the most is, holy shit, Britain's not doing well <laughs> economically. That's that's worse inflation than ours. That is that is worse inflation than the U.S. That is crazy. The world has not been doing well economically, sir. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm bad with numbers. I'm not a numbers guy. I don't know. It's 71. It's probably not great for us either. This is a podcast about this is a podcast about history, not about math. Well, you know what? Actually, fuck you. I'm gonna. Our next episode is gonna be on Pythagoras. Fuck you guys. You're gonna learn about math. You're gonna learn about algebra. You're gonna learn about <laughs> like you have time to do that research. You're gonna learn about how to use. Uh, gadgets and gizmos to kill Romans. That's math and math accessories. Oh yeah, that yeah. Do you know anything about Pythagoras? <laughs> that actually would be an interesting way to have like kind of incorporated history in math class. Okay, yeah. I'm... <sighs> Fuck, I got to do an episode on him now. Shit, I got to learn about math. Actually, the individual no, I know jack shit. So there's a there's a rumor slash myth surrounding this case. That uh, there was graffiti, and the only way I think of the graffiti is like spray paint. So I'm thinking, just he he just like teased the cops, called them. There, there, it's disputed on what he said, but I'm just thinking he's like, "Catch me now, you wankers," or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not creative enough to come up with a fun, funny accent joke. Unfortunately, they were found out right away. Like not the individuals, but the crime it was like it wasn't like, hey, it's gonna be a couple weeks before they figure out we stole it. No, immediately Monday morning. Oh shit, there's a hole on the fucking ground. Oh fuck. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. Immediately, Scotland Yard threw over a hundred people on it, and it quickly led back to Wolfie, signed the the lease with his name because there's a tunnel right back to the leather store. You're you're. It's going to be clear, like, hey, it's got something to do with this leather store. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, that is so, that's not good. You wouldn't think, like, I, awesome planning up till now. Like, what are you going to do when they see the tunnel back to that place? Did you not think they were going to check the lease? Oh, my God, that's crazy. That's actually incredible. That like That's such a big hole in their plan. Okay, I take it back. These guys aren't aren't like Moriarty at all. That's the biggest glaring hole. I think the biggest glaring hole was the one in the ground, but literally, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, again, early Monday morning, they find out. They go. They quickly pull Wolfie in and like question him. He refuses to break. Refuses to break. And then they threaten to kill his family. Actually, no, it didn't take that because these people are again not as smart as they think they are. All they had to do was let him go after questioning, and eventually, after surveilling him in early 1973, they caught basically everyone in the crew. Really? It took them that long? I think they were playing the long game. They caught a two... Me- I don't remember the details of this, but they caught like two members of the crew like passing money back and forth or something. Um, only just over 200,000 pounds was uh, recovered in loot. It's not saying if it was all cash or if it was some valuables... Um, but interestingly enough, within the first couple days, immediately, um, reporting died off on this. Huh. Well, that's suspicious. And this led to, this led to the claim that there was a D notice in, issued on this case. Do you know what a D notice is, Derek? Uh, from context clues, I'm going to guess this is, uh, cops telling either cops or or somebody in the government basically telling all, all the media like, "Hey, leave this alone." Yes. So it's not like it's not like a black media blackout thing. It's more of a formal request from the royal family specifically, saying, "Hey, please don't talk about this thing for now." Oh, these fuck, these, these fuck, these fucking lizard people. These fuck, these actual ghouls. 
Okay, now I am good. Okay, okay, this is... <laughs> That's the term for it, is a D-notice. Okay, this has completely changed my entire outlook on this case. Um, these, these, uh, these, these bank heist guys, these guys who did this crime, good people. Objectively good people. <laughs> Whatever it is that they did that made the royal family react like that, it was a good thing. It was an objectively moral thing. Whatever, whatever makes the royal family want the media to stop looking into this, it's something the, the, the royals were doing that was fucked up. The fucking actual evil gremlins. Okay, so there is n there's no confirmation of a D notice actually being issued on this. Although, with the subject of the reason why that the D notice could have issued, possibly be issued... Maybe they don't want a record, but normally when the D notice is issued, there is some kind of like paper trail, essentially like, yes, a D notice was issued in this. You can prove it, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's no record of that. But the two leading theories on why a D notice was issued, you got any guesses? I'm going to guess the royal family had something that they stole from some people in Africa in that bank. Uh, some sort of like giant diamond that was culturally important to some sort of totemic religion in sub Saharan Africa. <laughs> I want two theories. I want two theories. Okay, so there's the Africa theory. What's your second one? Because I told you there's two main leading theories. Um, some highly potent uh, fetal specimens that they were cloning in order to harvest adrenochrome. What the fuck is adrenochrome? Adrenochrome. It's the, the QAnon people. Uh, they have this theory. Oh, is that that like anti-aging thing that like the the? Yeah, they they say that they torch torture and murder children in order to harvest adrenochrome from their brains, and and it makes them young. Those are wildly insane theories, and I think more fun than the actual like conspiracy theories surrounding this case. Oh yeah, nothing nothing is ever as fun as in the conspiracy. So the main theory is that there were compromising photos of Princess Margaret and the actor slash criminal named John Benton. Like basically photos of them either being together or like in like oh they fucking kind of pictures is what I assume for that from that. Basically Oh yeah, that's uh, that okay. That actually makes sense, like, in, in, like, an abstract way, that makes sense, because it never occurred to me, but, like, it makes sense that people in the royal family would be taking nudes, but it, they would have to keep it under lock and key to keep them, keep them. No, 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 This is blackmail material is the theory. This is people, like, hey, you pay us. And it's hidden here as, like, their assurance, like, it, they, they're not going to get beat up and just taking the photos from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But essentially, like, Princess Margaret and her boy toy um, had compromising photos is the main theory. The second theory is that a conservative cabinet member had blackmail photos of him abusing young children. Well, why would that be blackmail? Everybody knows Tories are pedophile freaks. I mean, yeah, but people don't like it being plastered over the news. Yeah, I never... I guess yeah, it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be upholding decorum to admit to what everybody else. Yeah, and that this theory on the conservative cabinet member says that they literally left those photos everywhere along with the graffiti, but law enforcement took no action on them. Yeah, that would make sense too. I say makes sense. It's still in in pre, in real really really that's an insane theory. I'm I'm mostly joking when I. When they say the whole Tories are pedophiles thing, mostly, but I, in, in real, in all honesty, no, nah, it's, it's probably not it. I think. So you want to take a shot after you get, after you guess how long our uh, members of the high screw got sentenced for? Okay. Um, Everyone but our alarm specialist was sentenced to prison. He out of our named crew members. And again, we definitely believe there were more than just people. So everyone but Mickey Gervais got a sentence. Yeah, and then, and then, 
uh, Mickey's uh, Mickey's twin brother Ricky went on to have a long and illustrious career. He was living a long fucking life if he if his twin brother was arrested in 1971 for. Okay, yeah, I guess I guess kid then. Yeah, yeah. Let's make that joke work chronologically. Um, okay, I'm gonna guess. Um, if I'm more than t- if I'm more than two years off, we take a shot. We're taking a shot either way, brother. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna guess ten years. So, every member of the crew except for Wolfie, who was like sixty-four, got twelve. Hey, let's fucking go. Wolfie, because of his age, got eight years. Oh wow! How generous of them. Cheers. Prost. I'll go ahead and go back and talk about what actually happens. Like I've never read the 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 uh, Sherlock Holmes story, uh, the Redheaded League, but essentially what happens is Sherlock solves the case before they even finish tunneling, and as they pop up in the vault, Sherlock is there with law enforcement. Oh, uh, okay. So they did better than the bad guys in the Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah, they did better than Sherlock. Because, one, I told you our guesstimated range is 500,000 pounds to 3 million pounds. Honestly, could be a higher range than that with the nature of safety deposit box. They only recovered around $231,000. They only recovered not even half of the potential low end. So... What I'm hearing is there's a lot of adrenochrome just kind of just kind of floating around out there right now that we could feasibly, you know, we, you know, once we get our Patreon set up, that's going to be our uh, our first tier goal is that's going to be our first like purchase as a shit post. Yeah, watch us buy adrenochrome yeah, watch us buy for so, however much it costs and yeah. take it live on stream while recording an episode. So there is a very good. And honestly made me want to cover this. This is a case I've wanted to cover forever. But the thing with movies is you don't know what the heists are actually like based on. Like, hey, this is the heist name. Like, this is D.B. Cooper heist. Or this is the Baker Street heist. I didn't know what the official, like, quote name for this heist was. Called The Bank Job. That really leans into that theory that there was blackmail photos. I don't remember if it's the royal family or if it's the cabinet member. I think it was the cabinet member they leaned into. But, like, that whole movie is amazing. It's a really good uh, 2000s movie. Like, it's got, I think, Nathan Statham, which is, he's a really good actor, before he got big in it. Uh, It's just a really fun movie. Um, Funny story. um, I was having a really bad day uh, the day before I watched this movie. I had... Uh, my great grandmother had gone to the hospital, uh, and we thought she had had a seizure. She was just having a little bit of medical issues. She ended up uh, living for another two years after that, uh, before she unfortunately passed away. Uh, my credit card had got stolen, and then I had found out that my cat had ran away the day before. Oh fuck! I was having a shit day. And then I go to get ready for work because I had to go to work. It was a Sunday. I remember this specifically. And it was while I was still in Edmond. And I go to walk out my door. I had just locked my apartment door, like, to my actual room. We never locked the main door um, at that apartment just because it was – usually someone was home. Like, at least one person was almost always home. And that day I literally – Close the door and I'm like, where's the fuck is my keys? And immediately realize, I just locked myself out of my apartment room. I cannot get into my car because it's locked. I cannot get to work. I'm going to have to call in. Fuck. Because I had to wait. I think it was like noon or 1 p.m. when they officially like said, hey, we'll come unlock your apartments on a Sunday. Um, so I had to wait till then. And I was like, well, fuck. And I just had to sit in my living room just killing time and uh, i was scrolling through uh i think it was actually roku because i hate roku i keep a uh, chromecast actually normally but i was just like let's look for a movie i came across the bank job and i was like it's about a heist i'll watch it it won't be too bad i won't kill too much i'll kill time at least i love the movie it was a really good movie 
Like, really good heist movie. Real quick, to, so I can remember, I went ahead uh, on articles. I went and used history.co.uk. It's literally just the History Channel, basically, but their UK site uh, on the Baker Street robbery. And then, excuse me, uh, I went ahead and used Decoding the Unknowns video, the Baker Street heist, Burns the Most Mysterious Crime. Um, it's that same one that I was talking about a couple episodes ago. It's hosted by the same guy. It's like the casually criminalist guy. It's some I don't remember his name, honestly, because I'm bad at names, but he, I love whatever video he's in. And then I use the History Channel's video, Baker Street Burglars Make Off with Millions, History's Greatest Heist, with uh, blank. I can't see the full title because it's not letting me. Those were the main uh, places I pulled from. And it was just a – this this heist is just fun because it's like, how the fuck does this actually work out? And they kind of get away with it because there are de- – there's at least one named member who got away with it. No time, no nothing. And then however many people that we didn't know about, because this is, there's no way that was everyone that was involved. There's no way. Yeah, that's, yeah, it is. That's just a fun story. Like it's, it, it sounds insane. Hey, I want to pull off a crime based off Sherlock Holmes. And it kind of fucking works because they, kept over half of it. Everyone walked away after they served their time. Like, they only seized not even half of the low end, and I refuse to believe the low end is where it was actually at. Yeah, that's crazy. I really wa- I really want to know what all was in the safety deposit box. That's the thing. Is like I want to be a fly on the wall, not to stop it, just to see how much did they actually get? Did they actually get blackmail photos? Did they actually get this, that, and the other thing? What did they find? Because it's insane to think a Sherlock Holmes fanboy created a, a heist of this caliber. And it's, uh, I mean, yeah, he got caught, but I still, I still count as this halfway getting away with it. Because, like, we're not even catching even half of the low-end guesstimate. There's no way way he got away with it in my book even though he got caught You're assuming they were able to find the photos. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Also, 12 years feels pretty light for how much they got. They literally dug a tunnel. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was the 70s. It was, it was half a century ago. That's it, it, The prison sentences were lighter back then, and Britain's always had a little bit lighter prison sentences than, than the U.S., it's just a fun story. This is the one of the fu- like no one dies again. I have a fin- finally another episode where no one dies, Derek. It's just fun, stupid heist shit. Any final thoughts on this, Derek? No, just um, uh, my only final thought is uh, the royal family is objectively demonic, uh, and any uh, anything you do again, and I'm not in I'm not in Britain. So I can't face any consequences for saying this. Uh, anything you do against the royal family is morally justifiable. <laughs> it's morally okay. There's nothing that you can do against the royal family that's morally wrong. Unfortunately, they're more figureheads today, and they don't really hold as much power as they used to. But People keep saying that, but they still don't abolish them. Oh, no, that royal family should be abolished. 1,000%. Like, royalty is not a thing. Unless you're actually under a monarchy, which you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have a royal family. And Britain doesn't really have a monarchy anymore. So they should abolish the royal family. Yeah, uh, get rid of the royal family, turn all of their land holdings and ass- and turn turn all of their assets over to the state, turn all of their land holdings into uh, 
museums and public areas and uh, and uh, make a constitution for Britain and turn it into a republic. Fuck yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that, 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 at the bare minimum. That's the reasonable thing to do at the bare minimum. So, Derek, where can they find you? Uh, they could find me uh, in a bank vault on Baker Street. Uh, no. Um, they could find me on Twitter at Visigoth. The first I is a one, the O is a zero. They could find me on Blue Sky at, at Visigoth. The first I is a regular I, the O is a zero. Uh, Tim, give them the business. So, they can find me at Blue Sky and Twitter at both Tim A.K.A. Otis. And they can find the pod. Excuse me. And they can find the podcast at the Alexander Society Pod Pod at Facebook and Instagram. Alex Society Pod on Twitter and Blue Sky, and Alex Sanders Society on TikTok. And I promise you, we will finally, finally actually have beer reviews because I'm going to sit here on the call and watch Derek record at least one, if not two, beer reviews on what he just drank tonight. And we hope you have a good one. Please, if you've enjoyed what you've listened to, give us a right review, and we'll see you next time. Bye.